Okay, I'm going to solve this differential equation for you guys. As you can see, we are talking about second order linear differential equation with constant coefficients. And you see that the right hand side is not equal to zero. So this is a non homogeneous situation. And we will not be using Wolfram alpha in this video. We will just go ahead and do it all the way. And you know the deal. We have to have the three steps, right? So let me put it down right here. First, we are going to find the yh. That means I have to look at this y double prime minus 3y prime plus 2y to be zero like this and then solve that so to solve this we change this into r square and this is minus 3r and this is plus 2 no r this is equal to zero factor time right this is going to be r minus 1 times r minus 2 equal to zero and you know r will be 1 and 2 from here you know yh is going to be c1 e to the 1t so let me just put on t and then plus c2 e to the 2t so here we have the yh and now, here we are going to be using the uh, method of undetermined coefficient to find yp for the particular solution. So that's the step two. So we are going to find yp right here. Well, yp depends on what kind of form that we have on the right-hand side. And let me just put this down right here for you guys. First of all, remember, whenever you have sine, in this case it's sine t, we must have cosine t to help us out as well. So based on this sine t, I will just go ahead and put down sine t and cosine t, right? And this is being multiplied with e to the t, so right here, I will have to multiply this by e to the t. Likewise here, e to the t, okay? So this is pretty much a building block for this particular solution. But I don't know the coefficients though, so I'm going to put down a right here and b right here, and then I'm going to add them up. So you know the deal. We have take this and differentiate twice, and then plug in the second derivative and then the first derivative and also the original into the differential equation, and then match the coefficients, and then find out what a and b are, right? And another remark before we do that, you see, yes, here we have e to the t, and yes, here we have e to the t as well, but this is just a constant multiple with e to the t. Right here, we have a times e to the t, and this is also being multiplied by sine t. In another word, this and that, they are not a constant multiple of each other. This and that are linearly independent, so we don't have to multiply by any extra t right here, which is a great news, isn't it? Anyways, uh, derivative in action. yp prime, and let me just put this down like this. I will look at this as my first function, and then this is my second function, and likewise for the second term, this is my first, and that's my second. You know we have to do the product rule, right? Anyways, right here, I'm going to first keep my first function, which is a e to the t, and the derivative of sine is cosine t, and then we add it with the, we keep the second function, which is sine t, so let me put it down right here, okay? And we multiply by the derivative of a e to the t, which is just a e to the t, okay? And then next, we are going to be using a product rule right here as well. So I will put down, well, let me just put down the first function right here, which is b e to the t. And I will multiply by the derivative second. Derivative of cosine t is negative sine t. Okay, so we have the subtraction right here. And we add the second function, which is cosine t, and multiply by the derivative of the first. Derivative of b e to the t is just exactly b e to the t, and that's such a beauty. Anyways, this is what we have. And if you would like, you can kind of combine the constants for the a and b. Um, maybe you should do that because right here, we have four terms already. And you know, this is multiplying, right? They are multiplying, so two functions. If you want to just look at the expression like this as how it is, and then do the derivative, you know, you have to use the product rule four times, and then you end up with a really long expression for the second derivative. So seriously, we should just like, collect some terms before we do the next derivative. This is still my first derivative, okay? So what I would like to do is, let me collect all the terms that has e to the t times sine t. So I'm talking about this one, right? This is a term that has e to the t sine t. And likewise, we can also combine it with this. Well, I'm just going to put down uh, the function part right here, e to the t 
sine t, and the coefficient is a minus b, right? So let me just put it down like this, a minus b, like that. Cool. And then you see this and that can be combined as well. I will be adding them together. The coefficient is a, and the coefficient here is b, so it's a plus b. And then I will put down e to the t right here times cosine t, like this. Okay. Uh, to do the next derivative, once again, we are going to use the product rule. And now, you know a minus b is just a number. Do not put that down as like another constant. No. We must have a and b together like this, okay? We have to work with a and b. I'm going to just pair up a minus b times e to the t as the first function, and sine t will be my second. Likewise, I'll do the same right here. And this is just a you know, dot for multiplication. Here we go, I'm going to keep the first function, namely, I'll put down a minus b times e to the t. This is technically my first function, and then I will differentiate the second function, which is going to be cosine t. And I will keep the second function, which is sine t, and then I will differentiate the first. The good thing right here is that the derivative of the first is just that, because it's a constant multiple of e to the t. So it will still be a minus b e to the t, like this, okay? And then we'll do the same thing right here. Um, I'm going to first keep the first function, so I will write down a plus b e to the t, okay? And we'll differentiate cosine, which is going to give me negative sine t, like that. And I will keep the second function, so I'll put it down right here, cosine t, and we'll differentiate this, which is still that, right? So we we'll have a plus b e to the t. Just like that, that's the second derivative. And can we combine terms? Yes, we can, right? y t double prime. This is, so going, this is going to be, let's work with the e t sine t first, which is once again in the middle, like this, and that, right? So allow me to just put down right here, e to the t, sine t first, and then I will figure out the coefficient right in the front. Okay, so do it carefully. This is positive a times positive times negative b, right? So this is right here is going to be a minus b. Okay, this is a minus b, like that. But when you distribute the negative in here, this is going to give you negative a and then negative b, right? So in another word, you see, this a and that a will cancel, and then negative b, negative b will be negative 2b, and that's the coefficient in front of this term, of the second derivative. And we do the same thing for e to the t cosine t, so let me just open the parentheses for the uh, coefficients in a minute, and we will have e to the t cosine t, like that. So right here, this is just a minus b, nothing special. And right here, this is also a plus b, nothing special. But you see, minus b plus b cancel, and we just have a plus a, which right here, this is 2a, okay? So in fact, the second derivative is actually better than the first derivative, isn't it? Anyways, here we go. We will plug in everything into the original, all right? So now, I'm just going to draw an arrow like this. So plug in yp. For the second derivative, I will just do that, right? I will put this down in blue. So this is going to be negative 2b times that. So let me just write down negative 2b e to the t sine t, and then we add it with 2a e to the t cosine t. This right here is for the second derivative, right? And we will, uh, let me just write down the next line, so minus 3 times the first derivative, which is uh, this right here, okay? It's this right here. And I will just have to write it down uh, for you guys right here. This is going to be a minus b, and we have the et sine t, and then we have the plus a plus b, 
and we have et cosine t like this like that right and then this is for the second term like that and we have to add two times y which is we have to plug in yp so it's two times that which is a e t sine t plus b e t cosine t like this okay all of this shall be equal to e to the t sine t okay now on the left hand side you know you can collect enough terms so that you have something times e to the t sine t and likewise something e to the t cosine t and that's what we have to do right here so this right here is what we have to do and let me just set out first let's look for all the terms that has e to the t uh, let's put down sine t first right i'm not sure what's in the front yet and then we'll add it with something and we have e to the t cosine t and this should give us this e to the t sine t okay and now figure out what should go into the parentheses in red so let's look for all the terms that has e t sine t first of all i'm looking at this right this right here has e t sine t and this right here also has e t sine t but then be sure you see we have a times negative time, sorry a minus b like this but we have a negative 3 in front so be sure you take negative 3 distribute negative 3 times a this is negative 3a negative 3 times negative b is plus 3b okay so i'm looking at this term now and lastly we have this right here as well and we have to multiply this by 2 so i'm just looking at the coefficient so that's just 2a all right so now let's see what do we get let's collect the a first a 2a right here minus 3a so that's going to be negative a right 2a minus 3a is negative a and then 3b minus 2b this is going to be plus b so that's what we have okay and now we'll be looking for the et cosine t term which is this first i have the 2a right here let me just make it stand out a little bit more and then next you have to be careful this is the term that we're looking at we have a plus b but we still have this negative 3 in the front take this negative 3 put it here and then distribute so you are talking about negative 3a and then distribute it you get negative 3b like this once again you have this negative 3 put it here because you have to multiply in and then this is another parentheses so you have to distribute right here and you get that okay at the end you have 2 times this which is 2b like that so we're looking at this terms now okay let's do the a first we have 2a minus uh, 3a which is negative a again and then this and that together negative 3b plus 2b is negative b like that isn't it so this is very exciting because now you see this right here this is the coefficient for e to the t sine t that must match with one because the coefficient right here is 1 okay so what you're saying is that you must have negative a plus b equals to 1 and this is the coefficient for e t cosine t but we don't have any right here that means it's 0 so I'll put down negative a minus b equals to 0 all right and you can just go ahead and do this real quick you see you can just say you know combine them you get negative 2a it's equal to 1 right and let me just write down my 2 better this is the negative 2a is equal to 1 so in other words a is equal to negative 1 half plugging negative 1 half into maybe this one so we are talking about negative negative 1 half for the a minus b i don't know yet it's equal to 0 um i'm going to move the b to the other side so you see this is going to be b right here negative negative becomes positive so you're talking about b is equal to positive 1 half oh my goodness oh my goodness we are done with this right and you see i didn't even use a calculator so you guys can do this too anyways this is going to tell you yp well i should still put this down in blue for the yp right 
Okay, uh, well, uh, let me just put it down here, yp, okay? yp is going to be a, we found it, which is negative 1 half. So let me just uh, put it down right here. And then this is with e to the t sine t, okay? And then b right here is positive 1 half. So we will just put down positive 1 half and then e to the t cosine t. And once again, here is my yp. And we got our yh right here earlier. Okay? So at the end, y, this is the step three. So let me just put it down uh, right here. This is my step three. Remember y, which is the <laughs> final answer for the very original. This is equal to, by the superposition principle, yh plus yp, right? So in another word, I'm just going to write it down right here. Y is equal to CE to the T plus C2 E to the 2T. And then I will have that, which is minus 1 half E to the T sine T and then plus 1 half E to the T cosine T. And ladies and gentlemen, here is the final answer. Don't you feel so accomplished? That's it.